point, stranger. Come on in. How you doing? Good. You? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> How's Sage doing? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I should film this. I was like, perfect. Film Joey. He'll walk. I heard, I heard a vehicle <laughs> coming down the road, and I was like, there's only one person that could be. As far as he even had blood in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, he spent a lot of time with CRP. I know that. I mean, mind blowing how many ticks were on. How'd you like that uh, wrapper on point? Very, there? very nice to work around. <laughs> That's awesome. Very, very handy to have that there. Yeah, I'm sure you were happy for a good hour after that. Well, as you guys just saw, we just left old Joey's taxidermy shop. That's Joe that filmed for me and worked for me for the last six years, so still a really good friend. He does all my taxidermy work now, and as you see, we got them put up. We ended up taking two deer down. We put these two up, but I wanted to give you guys a first look at them. So, wide nines right here. Wolverines up there, so let me know what you guys think of them. We've got a lot of stuff planned today, so I wanted to give you a first look at these and we'll go from there. Here it is October, not October, I wish it was October 28th. Here we are August 28th, just trying to wrap a few things up, but I'm going to break the news right here, guys. I think we're going to have a very large surprise for you guys coming up. I was doing some field work here about two or three weeks ago. I was doing a little mowing and I jumped up what appeared to be a buck of a lifetime, just an absolute stallion. Had kickers, stickers, looked like maybe a drop, super wide, it, it has to be that Loch Ness buck. And so we're gonna pull a couple of cards today on cameras he should be on and see if we can't get a picture or two for you for the next time we do a blog. But today, I wanted to talk about the timing of mowing your clover and your alfalfa, which this is perfect time right now late August, about the 1st of September is when you want to mow that here in the Midwest. Gives you time for the nice lush green growth coming back that the, is highly palatable for an October 1st opener. Now if you're hunting somewhere like say Missouri where you got a September 15th opener, I might move that back two weeks, say you know middle of August, do your last mowing then. It gives it time to regrow and be green and lush coming back. You can see we just mowed this one yesterday this has got a lot of clover in it. it does have some grass that needs sprayed but I'm not too worried about this one in particular it's kind of just an extra food source we don't hunt here much um, the other thing we're going to do today is we're going to talk about scrapes now is the time that i start to transition all my cameras over to scrapes yeah i mean they hit the licking branch all year long but once they shed their velvet they really go to scraping you know it keeps ramping up all through september and october you know they start pawing the ground which they really don't do hardly any of that, you know, in the other times of the year. But, you know, going into this time right now, I'll go to my rubbing post, I'll put new branches on them. I'm gonna show you guys all three methods that I use. So either I'll do a rubbing post with a limb on it. Uh, sometimes I'll tie a limb down. If you've got a good limb, it's just too high. I'll just use some rope or some parachute cord and I'll tie that down to the height I want. The other thing I'll do is cut a limb and zip tie. You can zip tie a vine, a cedar branch, an oak branch, whatever, onto that limb so it just hangs down. I've been doing that for, oh gosh, I started doctoring scrapes back in the 80s. Been doing that for a really long time. I've experimented with about all of it. I've tried all kinds of different things. I've, I think I've perfected the height that they like and uh, I prefer an oak branch on those. Now, I know if you're hanging something vertical like a vine it's not as important on that height but i really like a certain height on these so we'll check all that out today and see what we can get done get as many as we can done and we're also going to trim out some of these stands i think we could see that loch ness monster buck so get all that done do our last disturbance of the year and then we just kind of let it let it simmer you know keep running the cameras and like i said this year i'm checking the sd card so i actually got to check them but we're going to pull a couple today and see if I can get some pictures for you. So pretty exciting. I hope you guys, uh, or I hope that I can convey how exciting it is to have a deer of this magnitude to go after. You know, the anticipation you have, a deer that size. Even when you're sitting in stand, just knowing at any second it could be the time you look up and you're like, there he is. And it's just a whole different feel when you know there's a deer like that out there. So, well, let's get started on today see how it goes. 
We'll go see if we can find a limb for this one right here, but this is about perfect for what I prefer. You see how this limb comes out and then swoops down like that? They can come up to it, tip their head up into it any old place. The one thing I see that guys do wrong is they'll have a limb that's out here about, you know, three feet or something, you know, waist high. They just don't seem to use that as much, I've seen. If they're up, you know, I've even seen where the littler deer will stand up on their hind legs to scrape. If they're up higher, that's usually not an issue, but too low seems to be the problem. So if you can get one like this, it's perfect. And the more they stick out, the better. You know the old phrase, a turd in a punch bowl? That's what you want them to look like. So the more leaves and the more gnarly, I mean, they, they walk out into a wide open food plot and that just sticks out to them, the more it gets used. So let's see what we can find for a limb here. There's an oak over here. Let's travel over here to this oak. It's got a lot of good looking clover right in here. Looks like a nice job mowing this. Good job, somebody. And by the way, you guys are not allowed to pick on my boots today. I've got them duct taped up, so go easy on me. I'm a poor guy, okay? I can't afford new boots. Let's see what we got here. And by the way, I'm doing all my talking right here. This is not in the Loch Ness area, so when we get over there, I'm just gonna be quiet. That deer is really weird. He's just sensitive to everything. When he sees a camera, you'll get two or three pictures of him looking at it, moving around, looking at it, and then, then you don't get any more. So maybe he'll change up this year, getting, you know, getting older and more used to that kind of stuff. But in the past, he's just been super sensitive to anything. Reminds me of a deer you'd hunt in Michigan. Of course, a six-year-old buck doesn't exist in Michigan, but if they did, I'm sure that's what they would act like. All right, let's look at this one here. Oh yeah, we can set that baby up there to however we want it. I love it, guys. Turd and the punch bowls, what you want, boys? Oh, there it is. See if that gets broke off. Sometimes they use these a lot though, I even break the screws off, but that's a pretty good start. I'm just gonna trim that so it's not quite so low. Now, if you got one limb that's your favorite, you could just trim the height you want on that one, say like this one right here, and leave the rest. Or if you like more's merrier, you can take some of these and just bend them down where you want them. And they'll hit all of those. There you go. This one too. Put all of those right there. You know, as we get through September and get into October, I don't know that there's a better way to take inventory than this right here. I mean, every buck that comes out into this food plot will probably come to this scrape. I did forget I got some scent. I was gonna try that and get started on some scent. Well, uh, we can come back and do that, but we'll just open these up for them, get it started, and go from there. Right, we've got a tree stand right here that we need to trim out, but this is another great spot. They tend to scrape on this edge over here, so I'd like to put something right here by the stand. That's about a 35 yard shot, so I'd like to get them a little bit closer. So we've got a limb right here. Let's check the height of that bad boy. It's actually not bad. If it's a little too tall, what I will do is just take your parachute cord, tie it onto the limb, pull it down where you want, and then I'll run the cord back to the trunk of the tree and tie it off. 
That'll usually last two or three years before that rope breaks or whatever and you gotta replace it, but. But on this one, I think, what I'll do is go get an oak limb and zip tie it to that. Yeah, buddy. Perfect. We're gonna try a little bit of scent on these this year. Caleb's a big fan of this. He's, he's the one that said give this a try. This is forehead gland and preorbital mixed to get these started, but I typically just open the scrape and let them start it on their own, but we'll see how they take to it with a little scent on it here. Oh yeah, that gives them scent off of that. No wonder he likes this stuff, that looks good. Here's one of our rubbing posts, it's kind of infamous. I don't know how many deer I've seen on this one right here. That's our world famous walnut. We've hunted a lot. And then the redneck right there where I shot the wide nine and the crab's buck. I've seen a bunch of really nice bucks right there. So really good spot. We started calling this death row because so many nice deer have walked this trail right here, this little mode path. Now this is one of my older rubbing posts that's got I put two holes in it, one at an angle and one straight, depending on the limb you found, but I really like the angled ones if you can find the limb to work with it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, buddy, that is beautiful. Mm. That is a thing of beauty right there, I'm telling you. I'm thinking about working this scrape myself, it looks so good. Love it. We're gonna see how this works, how quick they start hitting this. There's new bucks shedding velvet every day, so. These are going to start to get hit more and more. That's a little better. Yes, yeah, sir. -y. I don't use a limb off a of white oak a lot because they're a little more brittle. See like that right there? Just snap that right off where a red oak will really bend and you can twist on it. So a lot of times the box will snap these off too and they get working on them. They get all ramped up. Oh my gosh, guys. If you find a plot that looks better than this, call me because I want to see it. This is awesome. We'll see what we have down here to hunt, but this could be a spot for Loch Ness right here. Tree stand over my shoulder. We just put this new rubbing post in, so pretty exciting. Next on the agenda is when these beans start to turn yellow, we're gonna go in and broadcast our winter wheat or our rye in them. So that's what we're waiting on now. I like about September 1st to the 10th, right in that time frame, to broadcast your cereal grain, your you know winter wheat, rye, oats if you want them. So we're just waiting on that. Other than that, all the work's pretty much done. I leave for Colorado here in uh, probably a week to two weeks. I'll be out there for a little while. So whenever this next vlog is, guys, we're going to have pictures of this Loch Ness Monster. So look forward to that. You're going to see it on the vlog first. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks again for joining me. Yes! <laughs> that is awesome.